What's going on internet? IG here again today and we're having a look at one of the competitors for, you could say, competitors for Windows 10. Coincidentally, Zorin OS 10. So Zorin's been one of those distributions that's been around for a little while now and it aims to be a, a sort of a gateway or a bridge to those coming over from another platform, whether it's uh, Windows, which is kind of what they specialize in, but also they've kind of uh, trended towards other uh, platforms as well. And I guess imitation is the best form of flattery when it comes to what this OS looks and feels like. Um, but at the end of the day, it just makes it really simple for people to get up and start using something different, which if you can present a good option for people to switch, then they may as well give it a shot. So there's kind of two releases that, uh, that I'm going to talk about. There's the core release, which is free as we all know, and then there's the ultimate release. Now I know there's a bit of stigma around whether or not people should be paying for free software, but really what it boils down to is it's kind of like if somebody's going to take the trouble to kind of set up a system so that you never have to touch it ever again, then I wouldn't mind throwing a few bucks at it to get them to do that for me if I'm your average nan or pop. Uh, so yeah, that's that's basically all that boils down to. So I'm gonna have a look at the Ultimate Edition because the developer reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to give this a shot? Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna have a look at. But what you know, what you need to know is that you can download this OS for free and you can kind of tweak it um, and even get it to the point where you know it looks like the Ultimate Edition uh, without paying that money if you don't wish to. Um, but then again, if you want to support them, give them the 10 bucks and then you can enjoy the Ultimate Edition as well. Unfortunately, no upgrades, so yeah, it is what it is. Let's have a look at this really quick. Okay, so the Zorin OS desktop has a lot going for it, especially for those crossing over from other platforms. And I think that's really where Zorin has found its niche as an operating system. So first of all, on the Ultimate Edition, there's a lot of pre-installed apps. I'm not gonna go into every single one because every other review does it. And to be honest, we can all look at an, a spec sheet in terms of what a distribution can do. With the Ultimate Edition, you get literally everything you could possibly ever want or need, uh, and, and then some. Uh, and you get plenty of choices as to what you wanna use and which software you'd like to go for. Of course, you've got the software center there because after all, this is based on Ubuntu. But let's talk about what makes Zorin OS different and why you might wanna try it out, or at least recommend it to someone to try out. So first of all, you're spoiled for easy customization. Uh, when it comes to Zorin, there are great little tools that can help you change the look and feel. Not so much you don't know what you're doing anymore, but certainly enough that uh, you can sort of play around with the colors. So one of the new things that they've got with Zorin is the theme changer. Now you'll have to excuse the poor frame rates. That's just a thing with uh, VirtualBox, with the virtual machine I'm running again. Uh, I did try it on native hardware. It's silky smooth. I love it. Um, but here in the Zorin theme changer, you can change the highlight colors and the background colors uh, based on your preference. So for example, you could go dark and let's say, let's go green. So dark and green gives you this very nice uh, sort of effect here with bright green highlights and a dark green background. Um, I've got to say I'm a big fan of the dark and blue and I wish uh, Windows 10 had universal dark theming. That would be awesome. But let's turn it back to light for sake of continuity. And there you have it. So it's pretty instantaneous. Um, and so there's, there's little tweaks like that that make customization super, super easy. Um, the look changer as well is something that will be very helpful to those who have come over from other platforms. Here in the Ultimate Edition, you get a few more options here, but out of the box with, uh, with the Zorin OS Core, the free one, you got Windows 7, GNOME 2, and I believe Windows 2000. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that. You'll, you guys will have to let me know, but you do get a few options here and there. Again, instantaneous changes. So if you want to make it look like Mac OS 10, you just hit Mac OS 10 and you get a very Mac looking system. Uh, we complete with menus and, uh, and a dock down the bottom and all the icons do look pretty nice. So enough about that. Let's talk about what this distribution is based on. It's based on Ubuntu 15.04 and the bummer with that is that it's only supported for nine months. So obviously it comes pre-installed and preloaded with Linux kernel 3.19 with system D enabled and apparently that's supposed to give better performance but of course there's always going to be a bit of a rabble around system D but just like Ubuntu it has a lot of the back end stuff that Ubuntu 15.04 had so great hardware support great security and um, and obviously all the perks and I guess drawbacks that 15.04 had. Uh, including the fact that it's only got nine months of support. So bear that in mind, you're probably better waiting for next April for the long-term support release of, uh, of Ubuntu or grab Zorin OS 9 if you can, because that's again, based on the LTS with plenty of updates. Um, so one of the other things that I really liked out of the box with Zorin uh, is the third-party PPAs. So the third-party PPAs that come pre-installed 
uh, with Zorin OS as a system, um, they have some great third party uh, PPAs here that actually give a fair bit of good, good quality software to the system and uh, keep those things that matter up to date. So if you go into the Synaptic Package Manager and have a look inside the repositories, you can see under other software, we've got the elementary OS repository for a lot of the really nice photos apps and stuff like that, and the Geary mail client and all that kind of thing. Uh, Yorba is for Shotwell and also for, again, Geary, the email client that's pre-installed, which is really, really nice to see. They've got PPAs for up-to-date versions of Rhythmbox and also for the uh, Team XBMC, so the, having the latest uh, Kodi Media Center in here is really cool. And as you can see, if we have a look inside Kodi, that is what the new uh, XBMC Media Center looks like. Now obviously the frame rates are horrible here inside VirtualBox but that's simply because I've had to tweak it a little bit. So it, uh, again, once again Kodi on, uh, on, no, on native hardware looks amazing. Um, so again, Media Centers are a great thing to have pre-installed and they have a bunch of uh, GetDeb uh, games in here as well which is pretty cool. So finally let's talk about uh, the, the goal of Zorin OS which, which is to sort of help users Cross that, uh, cross that bridge into another operating system. And I think from that point of view, it's pretty straightforward. It looks and functions really similar to how Windows 7 does out of the box. So a lot of users that uh, that might not want all of the, the new fandangleness of Windows 10 might find this comforting and kind of useful, especially on older hardware that might be, uh, that, that maybe they're upgrading from XP and they don't really have the hardware or the money to be able to upgrade. This is a nice option to, to kind of hand them. They've made a few improvements in terms of the look and feel by using a new system font called FreeSans, and they've also opted to use the elementary add icon set, uh, which I've got to say, it, I mean, just out of the box, this desktop does look really polished in my opinion. I, that's just me, but they've got the whole flat theme down uh, and the fact that you can make it dark is really cool as well. Um, so like I mentioned, they've got those different colors there that give you a few more options. I guess my criticisms about this OS is the fact that um, obviously there's always going to be a bit of stigma about whether or not you should pay for a piece of software, but I've already covered that. Obviously it would also be nice to see some web apps or at least web app infrastructure built in, um, at least a couple of Chrome apps or something like that. You can of course choose your own web browser using their little web browser. Um, using their little web browser manager there that allows you to easily install um, extra uh, web browsers, whether it's the web, Midori, Google Chrome, or Firefox. But yeah, some web apps would be nice. Um, also, the nine months of, of uh, support from Ubuntu is a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit lackluster. Um, and also, there's no cloud storage um, out of the box here either. Um, either drop, um, Dropbox or something like that would be nice. Uh, I really think they should include that with. Uh, at least an easy way to enable that on your system uh, here in 2015. So that's, I mean, there's they're really little things, but in terms of overall system usage, I've only got this running on two gig of RAM and uh, it definitely doesn't seem to be stuttering too much visually. Obviously it looks kind of terrible just because of the, uh, just because of uh, VirtualBox, but overall we're using about 500 meg of RAM uh, and that looks more like three, 400 when I haven't been doing anything. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's churning away a little bit at the CPU, but that's because I don't have a graphics card enabled. So overall, for a fully loaded distribution, somebody who never has to connect to the internet, obviously Ultimate might be the one to throw at them. Um, but otherwise, definitely check out um, Zorin OS 10 Core, as uh, it's got a fair bit going on, and I like the direction that these guys are heading. They they know their niche, and they develop nicely to that. Obviously, it's not for the every it's not for every Linux user, but I think it has its value. Okay, so that's Zorin OS. We've all seen it before. It's got some strong points there. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I will see you in the next video where we'll continue a bit of Windows 10 coverage as well as we need to get back to the best of series. So let me know what you'd like to see the best of down in those comments section below. We've got a few left in the bag, but I'm going to be interested to see where, where else we can go with that series. Look forward to seeing you all again next time. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.